a legacy magazine publisher who grew through curation and later got acquired by the Penske Media Corporation, shows how to stay true to your audience. In the special WordPress seven-part teardown series, Jeremy Fremont and Vahe Arabian explore Vibe.com, an American music and entertainment magazine founded by producers David Salzman and Quincy Jones. Over to you guys. Hi, everyone. And here's um, our special podcast series on WordPress teardowns. Uh, I'm Vahem, the founder of Stereo Publishing, and I've got with me Jeremy, uh, who's our co-host today from Multidots. Glad and to be here. Thanks, Jeremy. As always, it's a pleasure to navigate through WordPress. We're, we're all fans of WordPress, so let's let's do it. And today, we've got uh, a teardown on Vibe.com. So I guess we might be wondering wh who, what Vibe.com is, who it is, and so they're they're also another legacy uh, music arts culture website. They've been around uh, I think since 1990, sorry, two two thousands I think from, from what I read from the bio. And in the two in two thousand, uh, it was actually, it was founded by Quincy Jones, so a very well known artist in the U.S. And then it's got it got bought out by Penske Media, and so today. Um, you know, from my perspective, yeah. We'll, we'll, let's quickly go through and um, see what they have on the website. But I've got some thoughts on sort of how they are really creating a network of sites and being very lean in terms of their content creation to be able to really uh, scale their content operations. So let's jump through, Jeremy. What what what, do, what have you seen on their website that sort of piqued your interest? Yeah, I mean, so let's just tell the audience if they can't see. One of the things that you'll see right away when you're on Vibe.com, so there's a publication uh, about all things, you know, hip hop related music, things like that. Uh, and so they also have a, a newsletter sign up. And as you continue to go down, you can start to see a few different pieces of ad content throughout. Uh, but it's really heavily focused, right, on all different uh, types of original articles that is going to be the latest news of what's happening in this world. And uh, people want to have the pulse, right? There's always something new to be talking about here. And so it also reminds me a little bit of uh, a celebrity news site, right? Um, these are going to be celebrities that are going to be, you know, famous uh, artists and musicians, and people are going to want to know what's happening in their lives. They want to follow them around, especially like if there's a new album that's going to be dropping, if there's a concert directly happening, if there's a big event, right? You want to have a pulse of what's happening. So um, this is a great place um, directly there on vibe.com. And yes, it's been around for a long time. If you've got a, a domain with four letters in it, you've been doing something right. Like you've got a pretty old and well-aged domain. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I think talking about that legacy as well, you can see that particularly there's the archive section, there's a the magazine section. Mm -hmm. So they, they they still have an offline magazine that they they're producing every month. Um, from, sorry, I'm going to scroll big back up because um, which is probably one of the feedback points that I want to raise as well. So they've got a monthly magazine that they actually have multiple pages that they can easily use that to repurpose online. But they only draw out the, a few of the main interviews. So they for the most recent edition every quarter. Um, they just pulled out that Jermaine Dupri's uh, article. So I think one of the things as well that I've noticed that publishers, can, whether you're a startup publisher, whether you're a large publisher, being able to repurpose that, um, improving that pro uh, process in terms of repurposing your content is going to be critical because it's going to allow you to uh, increase your content velocity as well. Uh, content velocity for our listeners is pretty much the amount of consistent publishing you create that you conduct that you gradually increase over time it's not producing a, a lot of content for the sake of producing content it's more about being able to do it effectively and then having the capabilities to then ramp that up because um we've seen many publishers that have been able to do that also be able to develop their uh subject matter expertise and also uh, relatively help them trigger top stories google news traffic as well, because of the fact that they're competitive, that they're, they're covering someone several number of times, and therefore Google the Google deems them as a, a subject matter expert. Yeah, and one one interesting thing here that I don't see that often, um, unless it's a, a straightforward news site, is you always have the date of publication, but they actually show the time of publication here, 
right? They call out 7.21 p.m. That's not something you see all that often uh, as far as relevancy. Um, also, when you scroll down on the site, um, I really like, I think uh, as far as the UI UX is how Vibe shows up on the left-hand side. And then there's a sticky navigation, but there's a hamburger menu that you can actually expand for the menu option and a search functionality. So it's not an overwhelmingly large item. You still are focused a lot directly because it's a black bar at the very top of it. You're focused on the main core content, which you're seeing in the rest of the viewport. So I think that they've done a really good job when it comes down to that um, for the overarching layout uh, of the sites of how when you navigate up and down, at least on the desktop version. Oh, great. Um, they make it very straightforward to access the key things that, that really defines what the website's about. So you can see even when I've expanded on the, the menu, uh, if they're covering pop culture or, or news, that they, they've got the categories for that, music, features. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of categories, right, that are showing there, but it's really easy to consume. Like, I don't feel like I'm overwhelmed, even though I'm looking at on the screen probably about 20 different categories, but they have it siloed. News, music, features, lifestyle. So it's really easy to be able to absorb that and be able to understand what this site is about. So I think they've done a great job as far as their site hierarchy and just organization is concerned. And that, yeah. that X out, some people get confused about how to X something out, but that's a, such a big yellow X, you're not gonna miss that. So they've also been uh, conscious of uh, the user experience to make certain, hey, if I don't wanna be on the menu, I can easily close it down. That's it, that's it. Um, our master of UX, Jeremy, thank you. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Um, I want to also tap into like, you know, what also hits my eye, Jeremy, is just that um, the fact that they've, uh, some other sites as well, you know, we you know we did the previous episode on Macworld and stuff, and we saw how very much it was topic specific, like whether it was um, best picks or like around a particular product or something like that. Now, when I see a bit more different in terms of their site architecture, is that they've got quite a bit of meat around features. It's not directly search driven, so we've got photos, lists, opinion, digital covers, and you can see how much of that is part of their legacy content. And so I wanted to explain that a little bit to our audience in terms of the teardown of the traffic before we go into the numbers, because um, I think that's how they sort of, whilst they didn't do it as well for the digital, uh, sorry, for the magazine, uh, there, there's a big part of that where they're using this to be able to create different angles to, to then produce a lot of the news content, flow into the news content that they're producing today. Um, you know, because I think the reality is as well is that there's so much artists out there, there's so much um, celebrities. And so the way that I sort of looked at it was, okay, when you break down, for example, in photos, uh, when you look at also, yeah, you, so you can see photos as an example, I'm gonna go into, there's an article that they've produced recently about the, the, I think it's an event called the Urban One Honors. It's talking about black excellence. So the, I can already see that they're focusing, even though it's hip hop and everything else, they're focusing on African American or black artists um, as well. And so they, they uh, pretty much whether it's their own images or their uh, custom images, they're curating. They're curating a lot of this information. So yeah, that, that that's even it comes it comes in even in even from from the magazine. Or the, and being able to produce the archive, so they they identify an, a niche or an angle, they curate that information, and then they use that information to then cover um, stories about that person on an ongoing basis, and that's what's helped them to really be very um, true to their audience and have a, a decent size audience, and, and I think that's what led to the acquisition uh, of Pence Media because they cover an aspect of um, African American or black arts within hip hop that potentially other people don't have, or it's not within their portfolio of brands. And I think over time, when they've become, uh, sorry, I'm, maybe I'm talking a bit more top level now, but as they've then become within the portfolio of brands, they can then stay true to covering this and they just continue this pro approach of repurposing the content. So you can see, in the, even as I'm scrolling down into this event, it's very image driven. There's not much detail in terms of, um, 
the in-depth content for the news or the event takeaways. It's it's actually just highlighting the exact more of the people that they think it's true to their audience. What what, what are your thoughts about that, Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the things is uh, people are drawn to. They've always said, right, a picture is worth a thousand words, and so if you have you know heavy image style content. One of the things that I've noticed as we're scrolling directly through here, and of course we're doing a screen share, which always slows things down a little bit, um, but a lot of those images, right, they weren't loading that quick. So I would also be paying attention to the page speed and performance. If you're gonna have an image heavy site, be thinking about kind of what you can do to optimize the image size, the load time, everything along those lines for the images because it's gonna improve the user experience. Um, another thing that I, I did notice as far as like really beautiful UI UX that sometimes is just a missed mark, it's kind of like an overthought is when you were actually up at the top section where it actually showed the links to the other artists, you always wanna be able to really focus in so that users can deep dive into a topic that they care more about. So there's a whole bunch of different uh, individuals that are listed here. and it's so clear and easy to be able to see that hyperlink, right? That hyperlink is bold, it's underlined, it's red. So it stands out from the rest of the content and you can go in and you clicked onto Chloe and you're diving into, you know, a whole Chloe rabbit hole, right? You're gonna be able to really understand all these different articles that Chloe is gonna be involved in. And so if somebody is really obsessed with a particular artist, this is gonna help somebody stay on the site for longer. It's going to help them navigate to more different pages. This is going to be a positive search ranking signal directly to all of the search engines because people are on your site for a longer duration. They're visiting more pages. So I think that they've done a really great job when it comes down to that. Uh, I do see that there are some performance improvements that could be done um, when it came down to their size of their images and just how fast their images were loading on this site. Yeah, taxonomy is, is a like you've highlighted is a very key aspect not only for just the site architecture but uh also for seo as well so being able to because you can see here, like in the menu that they have got the main categories but what's going to keep these articles like i said discoverable and, and help um many of the um as they cover more of the news to be able to then show the um subject matter expertise is the tagging and so a lot of publishers, as, as you get larger as well, they become more um, bit messier in terms of tagging because they might have a misspelling. Mm. They, they might um, not, not optimize it as well. Like, I mean, with Vibe, they've done a, a, a standard job in terms of, uh, you know, we, we, we know it's, they're very clear that they're linking to one page for one type of artist, which is great. Um, there's other, there's other publishers that take it to the next level, like maybe like a people.com, where they might have the metadata a bit more optimized, they might have the biographical information at the top before the article start to then give some of the more top performing articles or the, 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 oh, the, yeah, the discography of uh, the artist. So absolutely, exactly. it'll show yeah, all, all the, the different albums that they've released and things like that. So it's like, it's like their Wikipedia, like you're creating the Wikipedia of your world. And that's what's going to really, that makes it a lot more uh, stronger to and easier for the the site to drive traffic that way as well. And one of the things that we noticed being such an image heavy site, um, I would imagine how intensely they're trying to promote growing their social platforms, right? There was some Instagram items that were embedded directly on these pages. So I'd be curious, I don't know if you can, but uh, would you mind opening up like Instagram versus some of their other socials? I wonder I how large the uh, social following is because it seems like Instagram might be an area that they're really trying to grow um, as well as far as on social media because on the right hand sidebar it shows hey on Instagram here you are so Instagram has about 362,000 okay 16 followers and the relatively small number of posts and you can see again it's more about rehashing a lot of the content of the takeaways you can see that um, and Vahe says relatively small number of posts, everyone out there, but there's about 9,000 posts. So a lot more than I think him or me are posting uh, across the board. Uh, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But uh, it's kind of generic, right? It doesn't seem all that interesting. They've got the best 20, the best 20 kind of repeating itself. Um, I would have thought I would have been uh, but, a but bit for different more. genres, yeah. Maybe more engaging in terms of maybe the having um, a tone of voice and and stuff like that. But I think it leans more towards what I was saying. Like 
if you want to start like getting a better better about our traffic to your site and, and tap, tap, tap into the audience curation is the key. So you can see, for example, first step was they're covering an event or they're covering yeah. uh, a particular aspect or, or uh, doing an interview. Then they're going through and curating that. So now what they've done is they've got the best list of RB songs. You can if go you to click that. Onto that. Can you see if it links back to their site? Uh, big no, no. Hold on. Here, the uh, link the in link our bio. Okay. To see the full list. Uh, they should have automatically taken them to the website from the post, but that's a different thing. It's taking them to the list. And then that takes you back to that article on the site. So they are trying to generate uh, traffic and grow directly from Instagram and bring people back to their website in order to be able to kind of grow the audience there. Obviously, bring in some additional revenue when it comes down to advertisement that's happening, being loaded directly on their site. Um, and you said that uh, they were bought by PMC, so Pinsky Media uh, Corporation. So what other uh, types of web properties are owned by PMC? Because uh, they're a pretty big player in the space. Yeah, so you can see here as well, as you go down the website, um, there's like a footer area where they literally have, uh, and what I've noticed as well as part of their strategy is like you can see here billboard, art news, um, there is, she knows so they're trying to yeah there's a little bit of um indirect sites that are linking to her but that's not all their properties um, i'm pretty sure they've got like dozens and dozens of properties but they're intentionally linking to more of the entertainment portfolio of their websites and and the reason why i think that's the case is because uh when i went on to she media as well what they actually sell to what they actually promote to their advertisers is the fact that they've got these they've got a community they've got a network of sites they're a collective Okay. And so that provides a, a strong value proposition to their brand because they can uh, strong value proposition to the advertisers because they can say, "Hey, we work with these type of brands that they you can we can tar target a, a particular um, subset of people that you're looking for or, or purpose, and um, that that commands premium." So they can just say, like, if you want to target um, this ethnicity of mothers. We've got that data for you to 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 utilize and, and tap into them. So it expands think, their reach, and uh, that's obviously great if uh, you have money to spend and you're an advertiser, right? Um, you don't have to go to lots of different places. When you're doing that media buying, you can work with one collective. So just like She Media or just like PMC, and you can get a lot of reach going through one place. And that would be another thing, right? When you are a publisher and you start growing of why you'd want to look at acquisitions and acquisitions will allow you to expand that revenue base by actually being able to expand your target market or different markets that you don't already serve. Uh, and that might've been one of the things that happened with, you know, vibe.com, just as you were talking about earlier, Baha. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's been, as at the time of this recording, a lot of news around many layoffs that have happened uh, within the industry. And the, particularly it has been for brands that, that uh, publication, uh, media companies that have multiple brands like this. But I think as well, um, what so far from what I've seen from Penske Media has done is, is being able to really hone in on this strategy, which has made a difference for them rather than having individual brands and then having them sell separately. Um, it's i think made a, 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 a defensible mode for them as well uh so it definitely it def the strategy uh, from what i see and what i even spoke to many publishers in person is something that they are definitely utilizing and there's even um publishers where they might go 50 50 small publishers where they'll say like hey we'll take over like like over she media or penske might say hey we'll take over your ad operations you just continue doing what you, do, you want to do and grow the audience and will help you monetize it from, from you. So the reason why I'm saying that as well in, on this is, is that even if you're a small publisher that's listening to this podcast or advertising and we're talking about more of the enterprise strategies that they're doing, please don't get deterred from that. Um, I think just focus on generating um, creating, um, like I said, take that curation approach, even take it to the level of um, creating user-generated content. I'll go through a bit more about that now. Um, and, and focus on uh, building up your community, little community um, and using that as a way to then potentially tap into a larger network is, is, is actually what you aspire to do. 
because we know that as a as a sole founder or someone that's also in the business, it's hard to to grow your revenue. Uh, so really coming to is going to be very, very important, particularly for this year, as um, AI and, and many technological shifts are going to challenge your your business. Do you want to pop back over to vibe.com and scroll to the footer? Um, because you talked about user generated content and right there in the middle, they have this, have a tip, send us a tip at the very top of their site. They said, send us a tip. So send us a tip is going to be like, Hey, you're going to have an opportunity to fill out a form and give a little bit of insight. So that's going to help with kind of that user generated content. So it's going to be from other sources from your user group that you can get a pulse of what's going on. Uh, and if you want to talk a little bit more about user generated content, because yeah, there's there's a whole bunch that can be done directly around that um, play as well. Um, entire you know organizations uh, build let, let business around USG. Absolutely, and I think as well the steps to to actually achieving that. So what I was doing a bit more was uh, before I we jumped on the call, I did a bit of a bit of a deep dive, and I had a look at all the authors that actually contributed onto the website. Okay. So one of the things I think that Vibe's getting away, getting away with that um, other publishers maybe have had more of an impact as a result of the helpful content update is because they are part of a bigger network of sites. They don't have to really emphasize on their EAT signals like the authors and stuff like that. Because when I look at the About Us page, when I look at the author pages, some of them, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're assuming that everyone knows them. So you can see that there's, there's little information about the actual team members is itself. You have to actually go into the article to then click on the bio and the profile of that author and then leg legitimize their um, background. So they're getting away with that because of that reason, subjectively speaking. But what I noticed is part of the history for Vibe, which I think has built up what they've done today, is like you can see all these different authors that have, in fact, 925 authors. Wow, it's a now, lot of authors. Yeah, now they didn't. They, I mean, when I when I was trying to look at their current list, they probably only have four or five staff writers. Okay. So this their actual legacy has been built up on contributors on the website. Now I know in the 2010s, like Half Post was the golden star example where they had like different contributors and uh, the people were publishing content. But with first perspective and such general experience, that's really coming back into the fold. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't take the same approach as. Um, vibe have done in terms of just letting anyone and everyone publish your content publish content like this but um definitely if you're a publisher that's already generating top story and top news and you want to be able to tap into more of the sorry this is probably not the best example there's another one um stephanie long now they, they, they actually also if you look um if you look at the not, not, yeah so this one like was the email if you look at it on the bottom left hand corner for the video watchers um it's a Gmail, so it's a freelance writer that they leveraged until 2019 before they got bought out um, to get the, to the point where they were today. I actually even saw an author that was from Billboard magazine, so they actually had other contributors from the other properties that they were reposting content onto their current website as well. And And so for me, step one, if you're a solo founder, like don't be scared of actually leveraging your contributor mm. network writers. Get that going for you so that you can actually, sorry, I'm on the wrong website. Get that going for you so that you can actually have this aspirational positioning like She Media does because um, we, everyone knows that we can't do everything. And so it's really about the value of what you produce, providing to people, whether it's originals or pers personal perspective, that's gonna really get you ahead in the, this age of generative AI, first-hand perspective, search generative experience, basically. Yeah, it definitely is something that uh, can make you stand out 100%. And it's true, right? There's a lot of people out there who want to have a voice. So if you have a publication and you can give them a platform in order to speak, it might be their passion and they've been dying to be able to actually have some area to be able to publish their content and speak about authors that they absolutely love. So very interesting point that you brought up there that, you know, 925 plus contributors directly on vibe.com, um, a, a huge volume. Um, they of course don't have 925 staff members that they're constantly uh, creating content uh, routinely. So yeah, really, really good deep dive point there. And and the second thing for the tip for this year for 2024, which is something that Many other sites have done in the past um, that, sorry, many other sites have done in the past that now um, I'm seeing this more coming into 
effect is um this was particularly done in more fan based sites like wrestling and um that's why i bring up this if you're wondering why i bring up this random example i'm sorry maybe it's not here anymore that's okay well uh you can explain what you uh were trying to show absolutely like many of many of the sites uh that even even for the news content uh are increasingly starting to have commenting features mm. uh so commenting features in terms of like letting people to respond to that news update so obviously there's there's a key importance of being able to have someone that could moderate the comments because with pop culture and music that you know they might go a bit more negative or it might be um we, we don't want obviously profoundly to show up but uh, give, allowing the community to um have a safe space where they can comment about on these articles i've also seen that um not only provide more depth to the article but also to help give advantage to many of these news niche news publishers like i saw in wrestling uh, last year to help them get ahead when they're not yeah. publishing as much much content as well and again that repetitiveness in terms of commenting across new and existing articles is a fresh also indirectly a freshness signal so i've I definitely see commenting as part of distribution uh, being able to add more uh value to the content and um more first perspective is, is a key to being able to scale up the content and then using all that information you can identify new authors to contribute you can then also you know tap that into becoming creating more uh, vibe originals you can then also um lead that to creating more stronger best listicles like that they might have now so their their ones are fairly solid in terms of leveraging their expertise but then they can just have um because uh, i sorry we had an event last end of last year as well where um vogue was one of um as, as speakers and uh they're saying that now within their listicles because they they know that they're a legacy brand they're a trusted brand they're now allowing other people to um incorporate uh, but they they're realizing that there's a gap between the recommendations they're providing and people to convert so for them to bridge the gap between a brand to become a trusted place within even the best listicles they'll have even one of the items if it's um not something that the author has written then they'll they'll say they'll curate that and then they'll put that this tip was from this person and they have the byline of that person in the article itself and so taking that listicles to the next step to the, so that the brand itself can become a vehicle to then drive action rather rather than as a discovery place rather than becoming a place of conversion mm. is going to be the fundamental shift that in terms of this kind of content is going need, needs to happen because a lot of people can produce net worth pieces a lot of people can just produce listicles and churn out that content how do you take it to the next level and you, so that's what i ch yeah. challenge our audience and, and readers to think about yeah, and uh, it, it is definitely that helps you be unique, right? Uh, there's that personal touch that you just can't get uh, through the simple listicles. Exactly. Yeah, well, one of the things that we haven't dived into, and just because of the fact that uh, it's always interesting to see uh, when you have a large publication, how the search feature functionality works. Um, so I want to try to trick it uh, because there's Alicia Keys. Let's just type in keys. K-E-Y-S, and let's see, because it could be keys, somebody playing the keys. Let's just press search. I want to see if uh, how they actually distinguish that. Can you press the search button, and, and let's just actually see what the search page looks like? Yeah, see, it was already some interesting, it's giving some relevant order suggestions anyways, but yep, it's so it's pulling up artists right away, which is great. Yep. And it was pulling up the artist first and foremost. Uh, they also have like very clear um, filter options. So this is very interesting, yes. right? So they've got the authors right on the left-hand side. They've got all the subjects. So Alicia Keys pulls out. Uh, then they've got the different sections. And they show exactly how many results are going to be coming from each. And you can even look at the date range, right? Let's say that you're looking for something that is recent as far as, you know, what's happening over the course of the last, you know, seven days or 24 hours. Um, so, yeah, I think they've done a great job, again, with their search. I'm just well organized um, all the way around. So I think uh, if you have lots about uh, lots of content and you're looking for good ways to organize it, vibe.com could be a great thing for you to be able to take a look at and uh, hopefully take a few learnings away from. Nice pick up, Jeremy. I think that, that a lot, I really like, yeah, if, if you can't, um, I mean, there's some sites that maybe AI, the AI generative AI searches um, 
it'll be cost of not going to be cost effective and if you can just at least take it to the next level just kind of search with this kind of filtering then i think it's going to make a big difference in on-site engagement and even extracting i'm sure they even have um tracking to see what people are selecting from these things as well that these again these things can give you ideas to then lead you to create curate more new content ideas and sort of not needing to bulk up your staff to be able to produce that kind of content yeah i'm not seeing a lot of articles though directly here right uh, if we scroll down like once we get past this you have to take the next action to click something and then the articles load so yes. um it's really kind of helping you filter in say what do you need before it actually shows you those results so uh, yeah uh, an interesting approach that they took absolutely that's good that's great that you picked that up anything else you can think of that you want to uh kind of dive into on vibe.com yeah, syndication again. Sorry, we, we know what. We, sorry, we did um, mention about our sites and how they're showing up here, the relevant articles here. But they're also allowing to give um, new life to existing. Sorry, to follow new articles as well. That's also a challenge for many publishers. And so, the idea of a collective as well. Even if you're um, a small publisher and wanting to band up with someone else to help each other out, that take inspiration from PMC because they have like this main footer section where they're showing for each of the respective brands the latest article. And so that can also help with um, getting the articles indexed quicker, leveraging each other's authority um, without needing to go through that extensive process that maybe tech, me tech sites or maybe what Google's expecting from you in terms of um, trying to really provide more credibility signals to your website. Absolutely. So, so those are some high quality backlinks that they're getting from their uh, network of sites in that collective, right? So you can jump yeah. over to billboard.com, to the Rob report, to the Hollywood Most, reporter. So uh, yeah, very, very unique item that they're doing there. And the referral traffic that they can get as well, for sure. Exactly. Uh, of course, you never want to take people away from your site unless you're taking people to another site that you own. <laughs> then it also works out well for you if you're that publisher. That's that's a dream. You want to have a you want to create a mo like I said. You want to create a moat for yourself and be able to really uh, cover you because you know you're always going to experience up and downs with publishing. You, we can never always see a a rocket ship growth. So definitely, that's where I see a lot of div diversification is key. So yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, that's a very unique feature that you brought it up. I'm super glad that you uh, brought up that uh, down at the bottom of the vibe.com uh, search results page. Awesome. I think that's a great teardown. Any any other last things you can think of from your end? No, I think just to wrap up, like you can see, like there's just the traffic isn't. Yes, traffic we saw here. Um, if you look at Ahrefs, they get about a couple hundred thousand users per month from organic search. About three fifty, um, three hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, three fifty. So it's it's very distinctive and niche. And um, when I looked at Simil.com, they get about a million and a half users per month. My main takeaway is, as well is like, don't always chase the numbers game. If you can find ways like like Vibe have done to stay authentic, so that they start from the process of the magazine to curating their content online, to then using different ways of curation to then create new content ideas. Take that approach because ultimately you're you're making yourself valuable to then. If you want to sell your business, if you sell that niche publication one day, or you want to have a loyal fan and audience, particularly for a particular subset, then. You know, stay true to that. So you don't have to always go big to be big. Yeah, fair point. Uh, niches are in the riches, as they say. So go find your riches in the niche that you're passionate about and that you can write about. Uh, one of the things that I heard at a conference uh, way back in the day it was uh, from one of the founders of Airbnb, and it was a key point that stuck with me forever. So if you're thinking about doing something and embarking on an endeavor, envision yourself ten years into the future taking a shower, still doing what you're doing. If it's not something that you would still be excited about, but it's something that you dread, it's probably not an endeavor that's going to have legs and last for a long time. So if you're a publisher and you're in the space, all right, think about that. Is this a space that you can actually write about for an entire decade? Um, because that's going to be key and you can definitely grow an audience regardless of how niche it is. Exactly. So on that point, let's wrap up and uh, thank everyone. It's time for listening to the tech down and taking inspiration from this. And until next time. Until next time. 
Special thanks to our sponsors and co-hosts Multidots for contributing to the seven-part WordPress teardown series. Be sure to subscribe to future episodes at stateofdigitalpublishing.com and join us for a deep dive into our upcoming WordPress Publisher Success Week starting on February 26 by visiting stateofdigitalpublishing.com slash wp hyphen week. Until next time.